everyone, how's it going? So today I'm gonna to show you how to use Xcode, Apple's IDE to create iOS apps. Also, thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Whether you need a domain or a website or an online store, make it with Squarespace. Cool, so today is the second part of a two-part series on iOS development. I'm making these because WWC is next month and I thought what better chance to talk about iOS development than this, and I want y'all to get hyped about iOS development with me. By the way, I made a video about how to get started into iOS development where I talk about what I think are the most helpful resources to get started, so don't forget to check that out. Okay, so I wanted to make this video because as I mentioned in my last video, when I was starting iOS development, which was a class that I took in college called mobile programming, the very first office hours that we had with the TA was going over how to use Xcode. Up until that point, I had stuck like a toe in iOS development before and I had downloaded and opened Xcode, but I just didn't know how to use it. I had no idea what all the buttons meant. So I wanted to make a video where I show you how to use Xcode. I've been iOS developer for about four years, so I think I know my way around Xcode pretty well now. Uh, so I wanted to do this for y'all in case y'all are also stuck on how to use Xcode. I hope that this is at least going to help set some foundations so that you all can get started. Also, this will probably be one of the very few, if not one of the only technical tutorials on my channel because I don't want to make a tutorial channel, but there are a lot of other great channels that do this. And so I'll leave this in the comments down below, but I'm hoping that this will still be fun and engaging and interesting for y'all, even if you don't care about Xcode, because I don't know, I like to believe that you like watching my videos. Cool, so we're gonna do like a whole screen sharey thing. I got my mic set up and I guess we'll just get started. Okay, so I just wanna go over some prerequisites with y'all. Unfortunately, you can only make iOS apps, Mac OS apps, tvOS, watchOS apps on a Mac. So you do have to have a Mac machine in order to run Xcode. You could do like a cool virtual environment thing where you have like a Mac instance that also has Xcode, but yeah, you have to have some sort of Mac system that you can run Xcode on in order for it to run. Cool, so let's get started. I just updated my Xcode, and so I'm running version 9.3.1, which is uh, the newest one as of today's recording. Um, this is the first screen you'll see when you download Xcode. Uh, you can download Xcode from the Mac App Store, and it's super easy to do. Granted, it's a pretty big file size, so just make sure you're in a good connection. So here it is. Um, let's just kind of walk through, like I wanna get the setup that you have when you're working on an Xcode project. So I'm gonna click on create an Xcode project. Um, that is going to bring up another screen. Here we go. All right, so most of the time I just use single view app. All these other ones are for like extensions. If you wanna make a game, if you make a sticker pack app, the setup is slightly different, but most of the time, if you're just gonna make your own app, you're just gonna select single view app. So I'm gonna click that and then let's call this uh, I don't know, hello. Yeah, that's good. Um, the only thing you really have to worry about maybe is like product name, organization name doesn't really matter if you're just like coding on the side and for fun. This will matter if you are gonna submit the app to the app store though, but it's something that you can actually change later on. So not that big of a deal. Um, same with the bundle identifier. The language that you're gonna choose is the language you're gonna program it in. So um, I think for most of y'all, you'll probably be, be coding in Swift. So there's that. Uh, you can leave these checked, unchecked, doesn't really matter. Uh, like having it checked versus unchecked means that it just sets up certain things in your project for you, but you can also uncheck these and then add them later. Um, that's not a part of the setup process. So you can just do that. Uh, you can click next. Um, I think it's gonna ask for what you save. So. Let's just, sure, perfect. So this is going to be the standard Xcode uh, screen. So let me make this pretty big. Okay, so on this screen, I just wanna show you around a little bit. Um, so this main block right here, this kind of like big, the biggest section of Xcode is going to be kind of like your main file place, your main file viewer. Right now, this is open to the actual project settings, uh, but if you click into like viewcontroller.swift, um, you'll see that this is where the code goes. So this is like your code editor, project settings editor, etc. So most of the work that you'll be doing is in here. Um, so let's walk through from kind of like top left and then kind of work sort of clockwise. So in the top left, you see a play button here. This is actually going to run your app. Uh, so if I just click this, um, it'll, 
you'll see that like my app hello is going to run an iPhone 8 plus. You can actually select different simulator devices here so you can see how it works on uh, different devices which is really nice and it just all comes with Xcode so you don't have to download anything extra at all. Um, so it's going to launch the app here and let's see where my simulator comes out to. And so this app it's like doesn't really do anything right now so you'll see that when the simulator launches it doesn't really do anything but out of the box, you know, an extra project is always just gonna run and work. Perfect, great. So here's our app. It's completely blank, completely white, but this is what you get uh, when you just don't do anything. So um, yeah, that's how you run your app. And then when you wanna stop it, you can just say, uh, you can say stop, which is the stop button, and then it'll just stop it. And then it will bring you back to the home screen, which I think y'all are pretty familiar with. Cool, so there's that. Okay, now let's dive into the kind of like this left panel real quick. There's a lot of things going up on here, but most of the time you're going to be on the file browser. So this is going to show all of the files that you use for the app. Um, and so if you click it once, then you'll just open that file. Um, Main.storyboard uh, is going to contain uh, storyboards for your app. Uh, it's more like a WYSIWYG type of tool. So. Uh, you don't really have to worry about this stuff right now. Like this, this is just, you click once and then it just opens the file for you. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. These other things are nice things that come with Xcode. So um, you can actually do source control through Xcode. So you can see all the branches that you have as well as the current status for them. I don't have a GitHub repo set up here, but that's one thing you can do. Um, this, what is this? Oh, this is, I guess like a class and function navigator. So. Like I have an app delegate class and these are all the different functions. So if you click application will terminate, it opens to that place. So I actually didn't know this existed. Pretty cool. I actually don't really use it very much, but I think it just indexes your app for you and you can just go into these things pretty quickly. Um, here's a search function, uh, which I use pretty often to find stuff. So let's say I want to find a very specific function called view did load. Um, so that's how you can search things there. It's pretty straightforward. You can like, you know, search for very specific things. You can match case, ignore case. Pretty cool. Uh, this is where you're going to see like build time and runtime error. So if you have like a compile error, so let's just like add some garbage here. Uh, and then you try to build it, it's going to give you a compile error um, and it will slash should show up right here. Cool. So now this is like, what, what is this? I don't know what you're doing, so delete it. Um, so yeah, Xcode is nice because it kind of comes with all those things built in. It has a compiler, uh, it has a, a thing. So like, even if you're like typing here, it should like give me an error. Maybe not. Anyways, yeah, Xcode is really nice because it has a bunch of these things built in. Um, so, you know, build time errors, runtime errors, sometimes they'll show up in line. Sometimes they won't, uh, depending on like how fast your computer is and what version of Xcode you're running on. But it's pretty nice. It's all, it's all there. Uh, this one is for tests. If you have tests for them, you can run them through here. Don't worry about that too much. Um, if you are debugging something and you have a breakpoint, then this is where your stack is going to show. So let's do here. Let's put a breakpoint here and you do that by just like clicking the line. You can disable it by clicking again and you can remove it by dragging it away. Uh, so yeah, so like if I run this, then you'll see that it will break here and your lines will show up right here or your uh, call stack. And now it's launching. And it should, why? Ah, here we go. It just took a little while. Great, so now you have uh, a breakpoint and it's it broke there, basically. So um, this is gonna show you all the threads that are running as well as like what functions called what. So you can see that if you called several functions and they're nested, um, then they'll all show up here. Um, down here, actually, while we're in this kind of like debug session, uh, here are all the controls that you would use to debug stuff. So. Here's kind of like the play, pause button, step over, step into, step out. Those are kind of like the basic debugging like controls that you would have in other apps as well. And they're pretty straightforward there. Um, so yeah, uh, this is also going to show you kind of like what variables you have and the values of those variables. Sometimes they'll show up and sometimes they won't depending on how Xcode parses them. Um, but say like maybe I wanna see what the launch options there are. Um, Xcode comes with this thing called LLDB. 
uh, which is like your debugging tool. Kind of, it's like GDB for those of you who know that. Um, and so I use this sometimes and print out statements basically to see what the values are. So let's say I want to see what's inside launch options. I'm going to type P O stands for print out launch options. And then it should print out what launch launch options there are. I'm in a little bit of an older Mac. And so it might take a little bit, but it'll come. Ah, it's nil. So that's pretty handy if you need to see like the values of different things um, and just check your logic. And so, yeah. So I'm just gonna let this go by continuing and then I'm gonna remove this uh, for now. Cool. So yeah, um, that's kind of where your debug session stuff will show up. Uh, also, if you have breakpoints in several of them, they'll also show up here. So I'm just gonna add a couple and they'll show up on the left side. You can also remove them from here, which is pretty nice or like disable them. Um, so yeah, good, good debugging tooling. Uh, this one is going to show you all of the like sessions that you ran. And so I built one, I launched a debug thing. Here's like where that compiler error happened, where I like added that garble. And, uh, yeah, if you want to see what, you know, messages there were and what errors there were, and you want to really dive into that, that's cool. But honestly, you don't really have to worry about that all that much. And so let's go back to viewcontroller.swift. Okay, so I've covered kind of like the left hand side a little bit. Now let's focus our attention to the right hand side, starting from the very top right. Okay, so on the right hand side, top right. All right, so you're gonna see these three buttons. So let's hover over the first one. Uh, this says show the standard editor. So standard editor basically just means that you have one file open and you have the latest changes uh, reflected in that editor. If you click this one, actually, though, this the assistant editor, it kind of gives you this dual pane type of deal. Uh, and so you can have one file over here and another file over here. So you can have two classes open at once. So let's say I want to have viewcontroller.swift and appdelegate.swift, then uh, you can open it side by side. Um, you can also browse through it from here. Uh, so that's pretty handy as well. Um, so you can just kind of like look at two things at once, which I do most of the time as long as I have a big enough screen to do so. Because uh, most of the time I'm like figuring out how two classes will interact and stuff. So yeah, um, assistant editor is there. I believe there is more you can do. Uh, you can do like top and bottom assistant editor stuff. If you click into the triangle, there's like just like a bunch of stuff that you can do. But most of the time I just have assistant editors on right. So yeah, that's that's kind of the basic thing there. Um, and then this one, see what comes up, show the version editor. Uh, so the version editor will show you the different versions that you committed to version control. So this project doesn't have anything, uh, but you would see like, oh, this side has uh, like the latest change and then you can compare it to a change from two or three commits ago. That's pretty handy. So then you can see like the incremental changes that someone has made to a file. Um, and so, yeah, it's pretty easy to just like look at those things and tell what happened to a file. And I use that pretty frequently as well. Cool. Okay. So now let's go to the, these three kind of horizontal box type things. So these are kind of hide or show buttons and they all correspond to different parts of Xcode. Um, so this left hand side, you'll see it's marked blue because this is to hide or show the navigator, which is this left hand side bar here. So if I want to hide it, I just click it and then it's gone. And then if I want to show it again, it comes up. Uh, similarly to the debug menu, show, hide, and then the right hand side like this as well. So theoretically you could just have the editor and that's it. Um, and so that's pretty cool too. Okay. Cool. So now let's go to this right hand bar. So this is kind of the editor that's going to help you write code. Um, it's going to show you kind of the properties of this file, like where it lives, what it's called, what's the target membership, which means like, what does it get compiled for? Uh, as well as just like some other things. Um, and so for a regular like .swift file, it's pretty standard. Like there's not a whole lot here. But if you open main.storyboard, um, which I told you is like the WYSIWYG editor, uh, then there's a lot more you can do. So uh, you no you'll notice that there's like a lot more things here, but how about we just try to add like a button to this screen and see what happens. So um, there's this neat thing down here where you can just kind of like drag and drop different UI components. So there's labels, buttons, segmented controls, pretty straightforward. And so I want a button, so I'm going to drag it 
to uh, the screen and then center it and voila now I have a button great okay now that I have a button I think these controls are gonna make a little bit more sense to you um, so the I didn't the what is this thing called the file thing file inspector file inspector hasn't really changed pretty straightforward um, quick help is going to show you kind of the, the documentation I guess of what that button is and so this is coming directly from the Apple documentation uh, and then this is the, what is this? The identity inspector. Um, so this is going to, yeah, you can add some more stuff here too. Like the, uh, this will, you can associate this to like an actual UI button class. Um, but I think the real magic is like this attributes inspector where you can actually customize what this says. Uh, so let's call this like, you know, let's change the title to say hello. And then let's say, um, and then let's, uh, I don't know, change the text color to like this pretty salmon color. Yeah, let's do that. And then maybe we can bump up the font size a little bit. Let's say something nice and big like this. Cool. Um, see, and then you can see like there's a bunch of other like things you can customize for the view. Uh, and then over here you'll see uh, this is kind of like the, what is this? The size inspector. And so you can kind of change how this button is sized and placed. Here's a connections inspector. So if you connect this button to like an action, uh, then it'll all show up here. This will probably all make sense if you go through a tutorial um, that kind of shows you how to do all of this. But for now, I just wanted to get you familiar with all these different screens. Um, Ray Wonder like tutorials are really great because they usually do stuff on a storyboard and they'll show you exactly where to click to do all the different things that you want to do. Um, so I really recommend going through one of his tutorials uh, because then you can see how all this comes into play. But this is just me like showing you where all the things are. So I hope that this is helpful. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's kind of it. This is, this is Xcode. Um, there's a lot more things hidden within these menus, obviously. There's also a lot of hotkeys that you can learn, uh, but I'm not gonna go over that today. But just to get yourself oriented, uh, I hope this is helpful. So yeah, if you have any other really specific questions about Xcode or like, you know, there's a button you don't know how to use or there's something you don't know how to do, um, leave a comment down below. Also, alternatively, look it up on the internet. Like a bunch of other people always post different things about how to use Xcode and when they get stuck. So a lot of stuff online for you. But other than that, I hope this is helpful. Cool, so that's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you liked today's video. Uh, today's video is a little bit out of the ordinary and a little bit out of my comfort zone for me, honestly, but I hope you found it useful and fun nonetheless. As always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel. I will be vlogging as much as I can of WWDC. It is the first week of June. Uh, and so I'll be posting a vlog of that when I go. So thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I think that whether you need a personal website to have your own portfolio on, or you wanna make a tech blog for yourself, Squarespace is a great solution to that. They have beautiful designer templates that look really professional and beautiful, and so they're ready to go for you to use. It's an all-in-one platform, so you never have to install, patch, or upgrade ever, which means that you can spend more time thinking about what you're gonna put on your website than figuring out how it's gonna work. They have award-winning 24-7 customer service, so whether you're up at 2 a.m. or 6 a.m. or 2 p.m., customer service reps are ready to help you out. It's also really easy to set up or transfer a domain on Squarespace, and so you can set one up that is very fit to your own personality. So head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Mayuko for 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. And that's it for today. I'll see you next time. Bye! Why are humans made to choke on your own spit? It's like, I don't know. It's like we were made to die. Am I ASMRing? This is me chewing boba.